Today's first story is Moronic Reagan tells me a white woman to go back to Mexico. You guys, it finally happened to me. I never imagined it would. But today, it happened, and I finally stopped shaking long enough to tell you. I am equal to myself. Ruby is a rude lady, or even a racist lady. Nora is a store employee, and Henry is the customer. So after work today, I went to my local grocery shops since I was out of waffles and garlic salt, both of which are necessary for my continued survival in this dystopian hellscape of a country. Yes, I just got off work, although my job is really informal. I wear jeans and a t-shirt every day. Today's t-shirt was navy in color, with a dinosaur in the middle of a meteor shower, trying not to cry, and the statement, I'm doing my best on it. All of this to say, I should never be confused for an employee anywhere. They relocated the spice aisle for some GD reason, so I was looking for the inexpensive garlic salt. I was determined to find it because it was only 89 cents instead of more than $3. I was grooving to Hamilton with my purse across my body, definitely a customer, when this absolute bee rammed me with a cart. It wasn't particularly difficult, and I just fumbled a little. But what the heck, lady? I turned to look, and there she is. 60s brown Reagan hair with incorrect highlights, a large counterfeit pocketbook, huge sunglasses on top of her head, and a beautifully sarcastic Trump 2020 face mask on. I take out one earbud. Me, can I help you? I was born and reared in the Midwest. I am extremely polite. Ruby asks in a haughty, condescending tone, shouldn't you have those on while working? Me, ah. Excuse me. I am perplexed and have some social anxiety, so this confrontation is making me uncomfortable. Ruby, Adv, you're effing millennials. I honestly thought things like this were only stated on television or by the traffic cone in chief. So rude and lethargic. Quit wandering and help me find. Begins reeling off a list quickly. I'm now experiencing some difficulty with auditory processing. I have exceptional hearing, but not to the point that it interferes with my daily activities. I can hear okay, but it occasionally takes me a second or two to understand what I hear, especially when I'm anxious or busy. You will repeat something I say to you, and I will interrupt you midway through because something will click in my head. Typically, to combat this, I read people's lips, because my eyes react faster than my ears. But you know, see overlight happened, so there's no visual crutch for me. I could have assisted. I know that store like the back of my hand, and I am overly accommodating when stressed. I simply needed her to slow down a little. Also keep in mind that for the remainder of this, I usually react a beat or two after she finishes speaking. Me, I'm sorry, but I can't. Ruby screeched. Have you just interrupted me? I am now stressed out because she is bringing attention to this, and do I want to melt into the floor? I'm sorry, but I didn't comprehend. Ruby, oh my god, why don't you simply go back to Mexico if you don't speak English? I was just completely perplexed at that point, and not because of that incredible exhibition of idiotic and hypocritical racism. It's Indiana, and I'd used to it by now. Oh no, that's too easy. You see, dear reader, not only have I plainly been speaking beautiful, unaccented English during this entire encounter, but I've barely spoken a word of Spanish since college. I was born in Michigan, and I am physically and painfully white. I'm referring to naturally blonde hair, blue eyes, extremely pale skin, and white. I don't have any of the good Italian genes. The heavy AF circles under my eyes, which no amount of sleep can remove, I wasn't even in the international food aisle. How this foolish bee thought I was Mexican still amazes me. It probably always will. If I didn't understand her before, I know even less now. I actually can't turn off being courteous. Ma'am, please leave me alone. I'm not Ruby. How could you speak to clients like that? Where is your manager? I'm shivering and crying because I dislike getting yelled at. Please stop yelling. I'm not Ruby. Don't respond to me, your little bee. Send me your manager. Manager. 
comprador, you ignorant racial slur against Mexicans. Once again, reader, I am insanely white, just so white. So white that I had to peek behind me to ensure that this insane behavior was directed at me. But do you recall how I stated that I was desensitized to racism at this point? Yes, it appears that they have not become completely desensitized. I'm becoming irritated, but I'm still too impolite for my own good. Ma'am, it is not very nice. Could you not just say that and leave me? Ruby screams and grabs my effing arm. How dare you curse at me, little woo. The Lord knows how I ended up in this situation. So, a nice fact I discovered about myself today is that, while my fight or flight reaction remains frozen, my social anxiety has a temporary fury override. Get your dirty hands off of me and take a step back, racist hillbilly. I yank my arm back, and she really lets go staring at me, astonished. You can't just grab somebody whenever you want. You're entitled, particularly not during a pandemic. Now back off. I don't even work here. We've gathered a decent throng by this point, and an actual employee runs over and takes a step between us. Nora, what appears to be the problem? Ruby straightened up and glared again. Your co-worker shouted at me and shoved me when I simply asked for assistance in finding items on my checklist. Was this woman serious? Did she believe no one else had heard her screeching? SC looks at me for only a second. Yeah, she does not work here. Ruby, of course she does. She has an identification badge. She points to my purse, and I look down to find that my work ID has definitely come out of it. I keep it on a bungee, but it clearly shows the chemical company for which I work in bright, bold green letters. The store's colors are red and black. Nora, ma'am, please lower your voice and calm down, or I will have to ask you to leave. Our employees do not have ID badges like that. She does not work here. Ruby. Well, she still assaulted me, and I wanted to file charges. Now, my temporary wrath override is fading, and I'm shaking, trying not to cry, and on the verge of another panic attack. I honestly can't talk about defending myself. And then my hero, this amazing dude, another shopper who'd stepped into the aisles somewhere during Arl's tirade, appeared to be around my father's age, in his mid-fifties. Henry, it is not true. That crazy person grabbed the poor girl's arm. The young lady never touched her. Others in the audience added to my definitions after hearing him speak. Ruby shrank back recognizing no one was on her side. Nora turned to face me. Nora, ma'am, do you intend to file charges? I already regretted it, but I shook my head. I couldn't talk at that time. I desperately wanted to return home to avoid this woman and her ceaseless stares. Nora nodded in agreement just as the store manager approached. Nora, you are free to go. I'll handle it with my management. Ruby is sticking to her guns for some inexplicable reason. Are you letting her go? Didn't you hear me? She attacked me. I want her arrested and deported to Mexico. Henry lady, are you sick in the head? She has blonde hair and blue eyes. She is not Mexican. And even if she were, you assaulted her. I hurriedly exited the establishment without my garlic salt or waffles, experienced a delightful panic attack in my vehicle and returned home as soon as I regained the confidence to do so. Presently, I am only marginally unruffled and am starting to comprehend how absolutely hilarious the entire incident had been. Tomorrow, I will return for the waffles and garlic salt. However, I am in dire need of a beverage for tonight. I realize I didn't articulate this effectively when I posted it, but a user down below did. So now that it's the next day, I'd like to clarify. I am well aware that there are blonde-haired, blue-eyed Mexicans, but in my experience, racist white ladies either don't know or don't accept this and operate on stereotypes, which is where my complete and utter amazement came from. I'll be returning to that store after work, and if anxiety allows, I'll try to find the manager and see if I can acquire some video footage to press charges with. It may be too late, 
but I will see what can be done. Okay, I accepted part of your guy's advice and filed a police report first before returning to the store. I had a cop with me when I requested the security videos. The same store manager and employee were present. So I got to properly thank them, which was awesome, and I found out what occurred after I left. The woman apparently continued to yell and cause a commotion, prompting the management to ban her from the business. They got her photo but not her information, so I'm not sure how it will go for me. I'm also told that the fantastic customer from last night, as well as a few others, left their contact information with the manager. Just in case, I did return with officers, which somewhat restored my confidence in people. The officers will do their job and let me know if they need anything else from me or if they find her. Meanwhile, the employee from last night assisted me in finding my inexpensive garlic salt, and I splurged on two boxes of waffles and a pint of ice cream, like a madwoman. Today has been much better. Thank you so much for your support. The second anecdote involves the owner of my workplace pulling the I don't work here lady on a customer. So, I used to work in a bar. The owner was an A, but he was a pleasure to work for. He was a heavy drinker and a generous tipper. He had been permanently barred from all other bars in town, which is why he purchased the establishment. He had a policy that if he was drinking, he wasn't the owner, so if he got out of control, we could kick him out, but not 86 or call the authorities on him. Now I'd like to point out that he only signed the checks. Aside from drinking, he had little other involvement in the bar's day-to-day -day operations. One morning, I was opening the bar, and the doors are always unlocked an hour before we open, allowing regular customers to come in and drink. They knew the bartender would clean and stock the bar, as well as cope with the short wait times for drinks or refills. The owner walked in and didn't want to wait for me to emerge from the back, so he went behind the bar and poured himself a drink. He then sat at the bar and placed money on a rubber mat. When I came out of the rear with a couple cases of beer, I heard a woman yell at someone, who turned out to be the guy who signs my checks. She was ranting about how terrible he was for drinking on the job and refusing to make her a beverage. He informed her he didn't work there and went back to his drink. When she saw me, she immediately began whining about him, claiming she wanted to talk with the owner or management. Because I was the only one present, I informed her she would have to deal with me. She went on a tirade about how he should be fired and demanded a free drink for his rudeness and refusal to aid her. I informed her it wasn't going to happen because he didn't work there. Then she decided to step it up a notch and claim she knew the owner. Cue the normal, you'll both be fired diatribe. And the owner shakes his head, chuckling, making her madder. I called her bluff and ordered her to either stop talking, order a drink or leave because I had things to do. She grew agitated and demanded a tab, attempting to hand me a credit card. I advised her that we only accepted cash, but she was welcome to use the ATM near the bathroom. That irritated her, so she stormed out of the bar, claiming she'd take her business elsewhere. The owner then asked for my keys and quickly locked the door behind her. As soon as he did that, he returned and said, I have never met that woman, so you are not fired. We had a nice laugh. She did return around 20 minutes later, because there wasn't another bar available, and she was irritated when my employer waved and returned to his drink. She knocked on the door for almost five minutes. He then made me a sign to put on the glass door with the bar hours, and she drove away. Luckily, I never saw her again. The final story is about how it's wonderful to be necessary, but also crucial to be pleasant. I am not sure if this story belongs here, but here goes. A few months ago, I was invited to give the keynote speech at a conference in a quite renowned location. Keep in mind that I was both nervous and excited because I am relatively young, and this was my first time being invited to start a conference. I suited up and arrived in the conference room early to ensure that everything was working properly. Within a few minutes, people began arriving. Soon, a barrel-chested military type, 
whom I knew from the program as another presenter, entered. I stepped up to introduce myself and perhaps calm my worries by chatting before anything started. Unfortunately, he did not introduce himself. Instead, he pushed a flash drive into my hand and told me to set it up. He mistook me for an administrator because I was young and did not wear a military or security uniform. Before I could warn him otherwise, he approached some older military-type males and started handing out business cards. Instead of correcting him and not knowing the password to log in and set up his presentation, I simply left the flash drive beside the computer. He didn't notice, and I didn't bother to inform him. Clearly, he did not have time for me. When the conference began, and the organizers introduced me as the keynote speaker, I tried to attract his attention as I made my way to the front. He registered uncertainty, then turned bright crimson a few seconds later. You'll be relieved to know that my presentation went off without a hitch whereas he stumbled awkwardly with his setup because he hadn't asked anyone to start it up.